Hi there, my name is Henry Raymond. I'm from the Game Technology Center at ETH Zurich in Switzerland. I will be presenting our paper on behalf of the team. In video games, developers strive to offer the player a rich and engaging story, while providing the player with as much agency over said story as possible. However, when we consider existing video games, we discovered that these two goals are often at odds. Games with very rich stories, such as The Last of Us, have little player agency, while in games such as The Sims, where the player has a lot of control over the unfolding events, the stories tend to be rather shallow. The reason is simple, the workload of content creation grows both with the story richness and the player agency. And that's why many games lie on a curve that trades off one for the other. So how can we achieve high story richness and high player agency? We believe the answer is Emergent Narrative. So what is Emergent Narrative? Ryan defines Emergent Narrative as narrative that emerges out of computer simulation of character activity. Crucially, there is no global control of the narrative, such as a drama manager. Ryan also proposes to split Emergent Narrative into two layers, curation and simulation. The simulation layer's task is to control the characters in the story world by simulating them as individual agents in order to produce complex character behavior. The simulation layer is not aware of any narrative, nor does it try to create a story. That's the task of the curation layer. It extracts interesting events from the simulation and turns them into a coherent narrative. In our paper, we focus on the simulation layer. That means our goal is to create rich simulations with complex character behavior. There have been various approaches to creating rich simulations in the past. Most have either relied on complex simulation rules, such as the game facade, or on complex systems, such as Dwarf Fortress. Systems using complex rules offer the creator much more liberty to encode elaborate social behaviors, such as deep relationships and emotional interactions. This, however, comes with a considerable authoring workload for the creators, meaning that systems using complex rules tend to not scale well. Complex systems, on the other hand, have much simpler rule sets and instead rely on interactions of a large number of subsystems to create interesting results. The challenge with such approaches is encoding the intricacies necessary for complex behavior. Emotions are often reduced to simple dissociated states. We believe that the complex system approach is more promising for emergent narrative as it allows for more scalability while keeping authoring workload low. The question is, how can we increase the complexity of the agent's behavior? We believe there are two key properties which define complex behavior. First, interactions with the world have to be varied, but especially they have to be meaningful from the agent's point of view. It's the subjective meaningfulness that provides the fertile ground for the curation layer. An agent's action should therefore not only serve some short-term need, but be part of long-term considerations. Many past approaches have tackled this issue. However, most of them have relied on encoding these long-term processes in short-term rules and complicated word states. We propose using long-term planning for emergent narrative. Long-term planning allows us to greatly simplify the rules and states of the simulation, as we don't need to deal with the representation of long-term intentions. The second key feature needed for complex behavior are elaborate social interactions between agents. For interesting social interactions to emerge, agents need to consider one another. But it's not enough for agents to just look at other agents' actions. They must also consider their respective needs, desires, and goals. In psychology, this is considered part of the theory of mind. Social interaction has been explored in depth by many existing approaches. However, they have often been encoded from a single agent perspective, once again requiring complicated representations of relationships and beliefs. We propose to instead use multi-agent planning. In multi-agent planning, each agent will automatically consider the intentions of others. This means we can endow our agents with a theory of mind without having to explicitly keep track of each agent's knowledge on the intentions of others. However, both long-term planning and multi-agent planning harbor a central challenge, the combinatorial explosion of the planning space. So how do we deal with it? Our approach is based on three pillars. First, we perform deep planning for each agent individually. We do so using Monte Carlo Tree Search. Monte Carlo Tree Search is optimal for this application as it is efficient and supports multi-agent planning. 
deep planning fosters the emergence of complex behavior. Second, each agent considers others while planning. For scalability, agents only consider other agents within a geometric or conceptual horizon. This means that the theory of mind emerges naturally from the system. Third, thanks to the first two pillars, we can define our agents with simple actions and state value functions. This greatly reduces the burden of authoring. In order to validate our approach, we've devised a set of exploratory experiments to demonstrate the emergence of complex behaviors from simple rules. Each setup consists of a 2D grid-based map. It can contain obstructing rocks, trees with the heights 1, 2, and 3, and agents. Both the red agent and the yellow agent are woodcutters, and their goal is to collect as much wood logs as possible. The agents take alternating turns. When it's an agent's turn, it picks an action to perform. The agent can walk, up, down, left and right, or chop an adjacent tree. Chopping a tree will reduce its height by one and provide the agent with one wood log. The agent can also skip a turn by waiting. Take for instance this small world. Both agents want to chop the tree on the right. However, to do so, they need to move to the field in the center. Once one agent moves to that field, it will obstruct the path for the other agent. The red agent goes first. Let's consider the first choice that red must do. It can either wait or move right. If the red agent waits, the yellow agent can either move up or also wait. However, if red moves right away, the yellow agent will have no other option than waiting. Now let's look at how planning works. When it's an agent's turn, the agent will create a plan in order to choose which action to perform. The plan includes actions of the planning agent, but also of all other agents within the planning agent's horizon. Each node in the plan has an associated state that corresponds to a possible future turn. First red, then yellow, then red again. The node's value is an estimation of the agent's value function in the corresponding state. In the case here, it is the number of wood logs that the agent expects to collect in the foreseeable future. The plan is expanded one action at a time by adding a new node. The decision of which branch to expand follows an exploration versus exploitation trade-off. Each time a node is created, its value is computed by doing a rollout, that is selecting random actions for each agent up to a certain planning depth. Between two nodes of the same agent, a reward is computed corresponding to the difference in value function. To account for uncertainty, later rewards are propagated up the plan with a discount factor, leading to a Q value for each action. After a given number of expansions, the planning agent selects the action with the highest Q value. For instance, if the red agent moves right, it can expect a value of 0.83 on its next turn. This results in a Q value of 0.79 for this option, which is much better than the Q value of 0.39 for waiting. Red therefore chooses to move right. Now it's yellow's turn. Yellow has no other option than waiting, but it still creates a plan. It therefore considers red agent's next move. If red moves back left, yellow can expect a value of 0.64 in the next turn. However, if red chops the tree, there are no more trees left for yellow and the node's value is zero. As we've discussed, each node in the plan has a corresponding state. Copying the entire world state between each node would be terribly inefficient. We've therefore chosen to plan on a subset of the world, which we call a snapshot. In order to avoid copying snapshots between nodes, we only store the discrepancies between the node state and the root snapshot. Now let's look at the setup of the first experiment. In this experiment, we investigate the emergence of competitive behavior. Additionally to the actions we've introduced so far, the agent can also invest one of its wood logs to place a barrier in an adjacent field. In the first run, the agents only plan for themselves. They do not consider the other agent while planning. On average, the red agent will have collected a bit more than six wood logs after 25 turns, as it will have had to share the trees with the yellow agent. Even though we plan 45 steps ahead, Monte Carlo Tree Search allows us to do planning with as little as 125 visits and still get an optimal result. In the second run, agents do plan for each other. 
we'll see that the red agent immediately invests its first woodlark to obstruct yellow's path. Now, after 25 turns, red will very often be able to chop down all the trees. The agent's precision increases slightly with the number of visits. What's really important to consider here is that we have not taught the red agent to interfere with yellow's movements, nor have we taught it that barriers can serve as obstacles. Instead, the red agent's competitive behavior emerged naturally from the simulation. In this next experiment, we investigate the emergence of cooperation. We only allow the base actions, walking, chopping, and waiting. However, we introduce a new effect. If one agent is chopping a tree, and the other agent is also adjacent to that tree, both will receive a wood log. In the first run, agents only consider themselves while planning. Both will chop down the tree closest to them, giving both three logs. In the second run, agents will consider each other while planning. In this case, cooperation emerges. Both agents will first chop one tree, then walk over to the other tree and chop the second one together. Keep in mind, there is no communication or coordination going on between the two agents. We have not taught the agents the concept of cooperation, nor do the agents share any common state beyond the world state. And yet this cooperative behavior arises purely from the agent's ability to plan for each other. In the third experiment, we study the emergence of sustainability. Here we introduce a new tile, the well. When adjacent to the well, an agent can pump to obtain a water bucket. The agent can then use this water bucket to water a tree, causing the tree to grow to a height of 3. The agent will enter a sustainable cycle, chopping, getting a water bucket, watering and chopping again. We investigated a range of discount factors. Discount factors near zero highly favor early rewards, meaning the agent will always fully cut down the tree and not enter a sustainable cycle. Discount factors close to one on the other hand will give more significance to late rewards, removing any sense of urgency. The agent then often just takes breaks by waiting or wandering around pointlessly. Now let's introduce an additional action, planting. The agent can invest a wood log to plant a tree in an adjacent tile. The new tree has a height of 1. With planting turned on, the agent optimizes its cycle by planting the tree closer to the well. In the last experiment, we investigate the emergence of agent specialization. We will be using most of the actions and effects we've introduced so far. Walking, chopping, waiting, pumping, watering, and planting. We also activate the chopping together effect. In about 30% of the runs, we can observe that each agent will focus on one task. One will water the tree while the other will chop. Keep in mind, there is no communication or coordination going on. The agents have only a very simple set of actions that they can perform. And despite that, this complex behavior arises. Though we do not consider the results of our experiments to be emergent narrative, we hope that our approach contributes to future emergent narrative systems. Through these experiments, we've demonstrated that complex behavior can emerge when you combine simple rules and states with deep and multi-agent planning. We believe that these behaviors are key building blocks for larger simulations. Though we pre-recorded the simulations for this presentation, we are able to run them at interactive speeds on consumer hardware. To increase scalability, we will need to further reduce the combinatorial explosion during planning. For example, we could reduce the branching factor by projecting several states onto one node. We are also considering action value functions. These could be learned during the simulation and increase the accuracy of the rollout during planning. To summarize our contributions, we've introduced an approach to simulation for emergent narrative, which includes agent behaviors that are defined through simple declarative actions and utility functions. We've introduced agents that have a theory of mind through multi-agent planning on partial worldviews, as well as an efficient data structure for representing local states during planning. We hope that simple but considerate agents combined with powerful planning will open up new opportunities for emergent narrative.